Welcome back to our series about making a 16th century shirt by hand. In this video, we are constructing our shirt. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Lelena with Thimble and Plume, and we are historical costumers, and we love sharing the things that we have learned over the years in order to empower you to become the best costumer you can be. At this point, you should have your fabric prepared and your shirt cut out. So grab your shirt front and let's start that front neck opening. So take your center front panel, fold it in half, and make sure all your edges are lined up really well. And at the center front, take a ruler and measure the length of your opening. To find the perfect amount, take your head circumference, then subtract the finished neck of the shirt and add about an inch or two and a half centimeters for good measure. Then divide that number by two. And then don't forget to add your seam allowance. I like to pull a thread to make sure that it is completely on grain. You can do that or you can mark it with a pen, whichever you prefer to do. And then you'll carefully cut along that line the length of the slit that you desired and determined previously. You want to hem the slit with the narrowest rolled hem you can manage. I start by folding it over first. Now the most difficult part is going to be the bottom of the slit. So I handle this by pulling it until it forms a straight line with the other side. Now the roll will get really narrow here, but this way you don't have to clip anything. Now the reason that we want this to as narrow as possible is that we are creating an opening and taking away fabric. So you want to take away the least amount as possible so that you don't have a huge gap. Now this is the hardest part but I know that you can do it. As you can see here, once I get into this narrowest part, I'm really just whipping over the whole thing as opposed to how you normally would do a whip stitch where you're just going into the fold. Now, as I get farther up, I can continue with my normal whip stitch. Once I'm on the other side of the opening, I just continue all the way up to the other side. Before we move on, I do wanna let you know that this next part is a bit of an experiment for me. I usually construct the neck by sewing one seam together and going from there, but I've decided to try pleating them in separate panels. Now I hadn't originally planned on constructing it this way and I had just planned on using my usual construction, but the universe had other plans for me and sent me a challenge that really tickled my muse. They were photos of the Mary of Hungry Gown, like really, really good photos. And there was this detail and I had seen it before, but for some reason, it really caught my attention this time. Now I'm not at liberty to share those particular photos, but this one will do. If you'll see here, the seams where the panels are joined do not have the pattern darning running over them. I don't know why that particular detail didn't grab onto me before, but now I just couldn't unsee it. And I know that if I didn't do something about it, it would bother me. Now I already had a plan for construction. This kind of changed it. How will it affect the seams around it as well as the seams and the rest of the body? Would it be okay to do different seams? This meant I needed to do more research, which meant more time. Normally that wouldn't be a problem, but I was on a really tight deadline because I needed to get this video out for our group so long. But in the end, curiosity as always won out or maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. So let the experiments begin. You are welcome to experiment with me or you can tell me to take a flying leap, I, whatever. So the first thing we're going to do is hem the edges of our collars and the side seams of our sleeves in preparation for pleating. So grab your front piece and go ahead and make a rolled hem at the sides of your collar. You want this to be very narrow, like an eighth of an inch at the most. So do you see this inside corner here where the collar and shoulder meet? We need to clip this in order to continue. So make sure your seam lines are marked and cut at an angle right up into that corner, but do not cross the seam. Now you see we are free to fold that collar fabric as we wish. It does create a weak point here and we will come back and re reinforce this later. And from there, you'll just continue that narrow rolled hem across the top of the collar. And this one doesn't have to be as narrow as the sides of the collar are. And for those of you who don't want to join along on my little experimental adventure, 
the way that you would want to construct this is go ahead and sew the side seams of your collar together just one side and then press the seam open fold the seam allowances under and stitch those down and you want a very narrow seam there with small seam allowances as small as you can get them now grab your sleeves and you're going to slit the seam allowance up to where the join in the gusset is make sure you're making that slit actually where the seam line is going to be and not at the cut edge and then you'll just do a narrow rolled hem along both sides of the sleeve as well as long as well as along the cuff edge now we complete our fabric so pleat up the collar and the cuffs using the method of your choice and this video here covers pleating methods i'll go ahead and also put a link in the description box fabric is pleated now is the best time to apply your embellishment if you are doing any sort of embroidery or pattern darning or uh, traditional smocking now if you're doing any sort of applied trim you will want to do that after you have finished constructing the collar but since I'm using a relatively simple traditional smocking design and this video is about construction I'm gonna go ahead and continue my instruction and work on my embroidery later so the next step is to sew our neck and shoulder seams together. So take your front and your back panels and place them so that they are wrong side together. That is correct, wrong sides need to go together. You're gonna to line up the side seams of the collar and press push those uh, pleating threads to the inside so that they don't get in your way. Line it up and pin it. And then you're going to sew this down with a very tiny whip stitch. This is a seam that was used often in history. You can find it on underclothes as well as unlined outer clothes. I've seen 16th century reenactors refer to it as the Elizabethan seam, but it is still being used in much later periods where it was referred to as a butted or whipped seam. And it has worked similarly to an open insertion seam. Many surviving smocks have embroidery over the completed open seam, or it can also be sewn together using a decorative stitch like buttonhole or faggoting. It can also have lace insertion, in which case we call it an insertion seam. And you can see here, once open, it makes a very nice flat seam. So, so far, it seems like this new experimental method is going to work fine, but I really won't know until I actually put the embroidery on it. So the jury is still out, but so far it seems okay. Moving on, let's stitch those shoulder seams. Place them so that they are right sides together, and then you'll just stitch along the seam line, and you can use a running stitch or a running back stitch because eventually these are going to be flat fell seams. Now, one place you need to pay attention to is when you get to that join between the shoulder and the neck seam. When you get up there, you want to stitch into the neck seam. So finish out the shoulder seam, and so into the neck seam, and then you'll want to give it a few uh, back stitches in place in order to secure it and make sure those seams are connected. This is a weak point, but we will be reinforcing it later. Once that's done, press your seam open first, and then you'll press it over to one side. We'll then fold the seam allowance over. Now, usually you would cut one seam allowance shorter and uh, encase it in the other one, but since this is such a fine fabric, I want that extra strength and it doesn't really create a lot of bulk, so we're just going to fold both edges over. Then we'll stitch it down using a whip stitch. So, so far, it seems like this new experimental method is going to work fine, but I really won't know until I actually put the embroidery on it. So the jury is still out, but so far it seems okay. Next step is to prepare our sleeves. So grab your sleeves and your gussets. So place your 
gusset right sides together with your sleeve and starting at the bottom seam line, do not cross the seam. Make sure you're starting on the seam line. Uh, do a running back stitch along the seam line all the way up to the cut edge. Uh, you can see here where it's left open and how it overlaps there. That's really important for later on when we insert this to the body side. Step five is to determine our sleeve placement. Now you don't have to do this part if you don't mind your gusset sitting lower um, or if you don't have a lot of fullness in your sleeve. I have some extra added fullness, so it causes my gussets to sit too low, which I find very uncomfortable. So what I end up doing is I have to gather the top part of my sleeve into the side seam. So in order to do that, we have to figure out the placement of where the gussets want to sit. So grab a ruler and you're gonna place that under your arm. And now with a tape measure, measure from the top of your shoulder where your seam will sit down to that ruler. And you're gonna add, wanna add a little ease to that number. I like half an inch, but you can add an inch or so if you prefer. The less you add, the closer it will fit under your arm. Now grab your body piece and laying your tape measure at your shoulder seam, measure down both sides and make a mark at that point. This is going to be where the top of the seam line of our gussets sit. Step six, we are attaching our sleeves to the body. Now, if you have additional added fullness in your sleeve, you'll want to add some gathers. The best way to determine where to place those gathers is to take that amount from your shoulder to the top of your gusset and divide it in half. Now take that amount and measure it from the top of your gusset, the seam line where the sleeve and the gusset meet, measure up from that and on your sleeve and mark it you will gather from between that mark and the shoulder on both sides. Now, the best way to get nice, even gathers is to run a gathering stitch before you sew the sleeve on. So in that designated area, sew a running stitch on one side of the seam allowance and then sew an additional gathering stitch. So you want two gathering stitches, so then you'll have nice, even pleats when we go to sew them onto the body. So once that's done, go ahead and pull those gathering stitches all the way so that you have your nice gathered. Lay your sleeve onto the body with right sides together and place the center mark of the sleeve at the shoulder line. Then you'll place the bottom of the sleeve, which is the top of the gusset, at the mark we measured earlier. And on the side without the gusset, make sure that you are lining up that mark with the actual seam line. So the next step is to stitch those sleeves in. So you'll just stitch along the seam line. Now it's really important that you do not catch the seam allowances and stitch those down as you're sewing. Start at the seam line of the gusset. Again, do not cross the seam line. Make sure you're starting at the seam line and stitching all the way up. When you get to the seam line between the gusset and the sleeve, what you wanna do is you'll come right up to where that seam is and slip your needle through that seam line to the other side. Right through the stitching to the other side without catching any of the seam allowance. And now you're free to continue stitching all the way along up over the shoulder to the other side and then make sure again that you end at the seam line of the sleeve where it attaches to the gusset. You do not want to cross the seam line. Whatever you do, do not cross the seam lines. Don't cross the streams. Now take your shirt over to the iron and press those seams. Step seven, we are sewing up our side seams. Now, fold your shirt in half right sides together and start out by matching the seam lines at the intersection of the gusset and the sleeve and then kind of skip over the gusset and you'll begin matching things up right at your uh, right at the seam line under the gusset you'll match it up all the way down to your wrist opening. If you are doing an opening, you'll want to leave about um, four to five inches or 
10 to 12 centimeters. Then go to the other side along the side seam at the bottom of the gusset and just start matching things up. Again, if you want to leave yourself an opening at the bottom of the body, you can do that as well. That one I tend to do um, about six to eight inches or approximately 15 centimeters. So next we're going to deal with that gusset. So turn your shirt over and this is our side seam and up here is our shoulder area. Take the gusset and fold it in and starting at that seam allowance, work it so that you are just placing those cut edges together and then you'll get that into that little triangle that's left for it. Make sure all those seam allowances are pulled out and nothing is tucked in. Work along one side and then you'll continue and do the same thing along the other side of that seam allowance, lining everything up and making sure it's matched up beautifully. Now, since this other side is already stitched, we only have to deal with the area that we just pinned. So stitch up that side seam with a running stitch all the way to the bottom of that gusset. Now at this point we have three seams coming together. I've marked this point with this blue dot here. So what I do is I come all the way up, right up to that point of the gusset. And you can see here, this is where everything joins together. This is a super important point. So I'm gonna bring my needle right through that intersection. I've been very careful not to catch any of the fabric that is on the other side of the seam. And then I just come back through, same way, continuing on with this other seam line that runs along the gusset. And then I'll continue along until I hit the next junction. And I'm basically going to proceed in the exact same way. I'm going to come right up to where those seams end and I'm gonna bring my needle right to the end of it. It's almost like I've continued the, the stitch from the other side. Uh, I'll go right into that join right there into that hole, oh, excuse me, the blue that marks the hole. You can see everything is still free and nothing is caught up. Now I have to go and stitch the other side of this. So I'm gonna bring this through uh, on the, I think believe we're on the shoulder side here. We're gonna bring this through to the other side. And now we'll turn our fabric and push all the seam allowances out of the way and continue down this other seam line and just continue stitching along until you hit your next completed seam line on your sleeve. Okay, so we've reached our sleeve seam that we've already stitched. You can see this is where we clipped it before so that we were able to fo fold those seam allowances over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here. We're just gonna finish up this seam like we did the rest. We're gonna bring it in until we uh, catch up with the seam of the sleeve and we'll do a few back stitches where they meet. Uh, this gives us a nice secure stitch. It, it is a, it does get a little stress here, um, but we are going to be flat felling this. So that is going to help uh, keep some of that strain under control and strengthen that seam. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do this seam. And now I'll need to stitch this sleeve seam. So I'm going to cut a new thread and start at the top. And I'm going to do a stitch similar to what I did on the sides of the collar, where I'm just joining this with a very tiny whip stitch that goes just in to the fold, just a few threads in from where the fold is. All right, so I've gotten to the end here. I want to make sure I'm leaving four to five inches, which is 10 to 12 centimeters open so I can get my wrist in and out. Now, if you are doing it to where you just slip it on and off, then you can close it all the way. Once that's open, we just go ahead and push the seam open. See how flat that seam gets? Now run this under the iron and it's great. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about our flat felling for our seams. So go ahead and take this to the iron and press all your seams. Just go press them flat first, and then I like to press everything open first. And step eight is to fell the seam allowances. 
So now we're going to make everything really nice and neat by felling down all our seam allowances. This is where we really have to think ahead and plan out which direction we want everything to go in so that we have a nice origami of seam allowances as opposed to a big bulky mess. This is the seam running to the hem. What I want to do is we're going to do that, but this is going to go in an opposite direction. So we need to clip this right here. So I'm just going to come in here. I just want to clip so that we have a separation here. So you can see I can do separate things with that. And then we're going to do the same on up here. So this goes up over our shoulder, right? I want this to go a different direction. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to clip it right there. Okay. So that's going to come out there. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to do over the shoulder first. I don't like this. This is sloppy looking. So what I want to do is I want to encase the gathered side into the straight. So I'm this over the shoulder. I'm going so that the flat sits over the gathers. Since this is a lot in here, I am going to clip half of this out here. So I'm just going to clip them away. See, that makes it a lot nicer. And I want this to be as flat as possible out here. And that's why I like to press it open first so that I have a nice flat um, seam. Okay, so I'm rounding the corner over here. Now, so you see what I want this to come into here. So I got to clip it somewhere, but I want to clip it here, right here, like so. Okay, so go ahead and sew this seam. Okay, so that seam is done. Okay, and do the same with this seam here. So having the ham in here helps helps to separate my stuff and it just makes it easier to to get everything lined up and pinned. Okay, so now because we have our side seam slit here. Do that. You only have to slit one side of it because what I'm going to do is here I'm going to turn that little corner over like that. that I don't have a little raw edge there. Cool. All right, so now go ahead and stitch that down. So for the gusset, what we're going to do is we're going to spread it out and we want to spread the seams so that they are facing away from the center and then we will fold them over. Again, I'm not clipping out the insides of the seams and encasing them in the outer because it's such a fine uh, linen and it isn't creating a lot of bulk. Um, at this corner here, I'm just encasing it in. I'm not doing any sort of fancy mitering or anything. It's just a simple folded over corner going around and uh, pinning all of my seam allowances down and over and you can see everything is facing away from the middle. And now we can just stitch around with a whip stitch to complete our flat fell seam. <laughs> 
the next step is closures and finishing work. And this includes reinforcing some areas, adding some closures to the neck and sleeves, as well as hemming. And we'll go into de more depth on your choices as well as how to do it in this video here. And I'll also be posting the smocking video here if you're interested in learning more about pleat work embroidery and if you're curious to see how my experiment turned out. Happy stitching and we'll see you in the next video.